Hello, and good evening. Thank you for stopping in today for your custom mobility and chair fitting. How are you feeling? Understandably. Well, if there's anything I can do to put your mind at ease or to make you feel more comfortable, we have beverages and refreshments. Just all you have to do is ask, and I'll try to make this experience as comfortable and informative as possible. Our company has access to a grid of different suppliers and custom vendors, so if there's anything in particular that you would be liking or looking for, there's a very good likelihood that we can obtain it. So please take a moment and tell me a little bit about yourself and what kind of devices you are hopeful for. I know in the email we had discussed a little bit about custom chair measurements. And what kind of struggles do you have on a day-to-day -day basis and what would you like to uh, see as a result of this? Okay. Do you mind if I just take a couple of notes? Okay, and how long do you usually stay in that position? Okay, isn't that the preferred method that the preferred comfort level that you have? Okay. On a scale of one to ten, one being absolutely miserable and uncomfortable, ten being not bothered at all, no pain, no discomfort for fairly long periods of time. How long does that what would you rate that? Okay. And given that amount of time that you would like to spend um, being active and mobile, how long would you like to see comfortable level? Okay. And in your occupation, are you required to be mobile, be functional with limited breaks for any significant amount of time. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. If you hear the water running, it's just our hydroponics uh, plant. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of soothing. Okay. Well, that's something that I can certainly relate to. Many of us that work here uh, are chair users, we have mobility aids, we use wheelchairs ourselves, spend a lot of time in them, so I can empathize a lot with those requests. Okay. Well, usually what I try to do at the beginning is get a good idea of what your needs are, what your preferences are, and then going through some of the general measurements and hopefully get you fitted for something to fit your posture type, your comfort level, your activity level, as well as offer anything that might be a recommendation that you're not aware of. Okay. If it's okay with you, can I start with some just general measurements, some general exercises to see approximately where your balance is, where your center of gravity is, and if you have you know, more strength in one side versus another, your ability to maintain upright, that sort of thing. Okay, I'm gonna to try to be very gentle, um, all with your consent, so if there's any portion of this that you feel uncomfortable with, or anything strikes as uncomfortable, let me know, okay? All right. Now, just start with some hand sanitizer first, almost. I'm going to start by placing my hands on your shoulders and I want you to try to maintain an upright position if you're able to. If you're not, just let me know. I'll hold you in position and we'll get you back into a comfortable place. But I just want to see where your balance level is, okay? I'm just going to press evenly on both shoulders. Then I'm going to try to rock you a little bit. 
And you have a good adjustment value there, so that's wonderful. Do you mind lifting your shoulders up? Lift them as high as you can. And I'm going to try to push down. Any tenderness, anything like that? I'm going to manipulate your neck just a little bit, and I know that this might seem a little bit not as relevant, but in the case that you have any limitations in how your head turns or rotates, I want to make sure that we can, you know, accommodate that, okay? Okay. I'm going to place my hands on the side of your jaw here, and I'm going to kind of cradle your head, so if you want to just allow all of your weight of your head to fall on my hands, that's totally okay. You have good rotational value. Okay. And on that side, perfectly fine as well. Okay, now I just know this is going to seem kind of odd, but I'm going to push your face to the side here, and I want you to push against me. Counter push, okay? Okay, good, good. Okay. Let's do the other side. And I'm going to push on your right cheek and push against me, okay? Wonderful. Good job. So you have good neck strength values. And have you been given a diagnosis of any sort? Um, any prognosis? Is this something that's going to be a evolving situation? Something that's going to need periodic maintenance? Or do you think that this is pretty stabilized? Have you gotten a diagnosis yet? Mm, okay. Do you mind? Do you feel comfortable sharing with me any of the events that led up to that? It's okay if you don't. Okay. Well, I'm not a medical physician. I can't by any means give a diagnosis. Um, but if it's something that has, in your reality progressed. Um, sometimes it's good to take a more proactive stance when it comes to mobile equipment. If you begin to lose the ability to sit for longer periods of time due to atrophy, loss of circulation, uh, one of the other things that we can kind of do is get you something like a Rojo cushion, something that's a pneumatic cushion, uh, where the firmness can be adjusted in time. And that can be immensely good for the points where you put a lot of pressure. Okay. Alrighty. So now on to the measurements. The first area is going to be probably the most obvious one. I'm going to measure the width of your waist, so where your hip would normally meet a side guard or the wheel, depending on what your preference would be. Is it okay if I place my hands on your lap? Just going to be taking a final measuring tape and then from one side of your hips to the other. And again, another personal question that you don't have to answer if you're not comfortable. Have you noticed any weight gain or weight loss? Just write down some numbers. In your previous weight, if you had to take a guesstimation. Okay. Have you been weighed recently? Okay. And this is over how many months? Okay, so kind of average. Okay. And now I'm going to measure your knees. I'm going to back up just a little bit. And if you are sitting in this current position, is this how your legs feel most comfortable, space-wise? Okay. And if you had a choice, would you prefer your knees to be a little bit more lax, to have a little bit more gait? Okay. And then just try to relax your legs as much as you can. Yeah, if you have a spasm, that's okay. I'll just wait. I'm familiar with those. Spasms are something that you're experiencing quite a bit. 
Okay. From personal experience, one of the things that I can make a note of and take it for what it's worth, but spasms, especially in the lower back, um, they can certainly make your entire torso go very stiff. Uh, what I'd probably recommend is a side guard or something that has a good grip rail on it. Okay, so we have 16 inches on the knee depth. Okay. And that way, if you do have an onset of a spasm, it's not going to be something that would throw you out of the chair. You'll have something that you can kind of get your bearings on. I can show you different types of side guards, and we can go over their purpose, either for stability, clothing guards, something that's very minimal, and they can prevent your clothing from getting damaged or any kind of weather related from the wheels. Okay. I'm going to measure from the top of your knee all the way down to where your ankle bends. Measure the width of your feet. And have you had any foot drop or anything like that? Has anyone discussed with you what that is? Okay. Well, generally it's when the lack of movement of your ankles causes the muscles your metatarsal muscles and the muscles that go up to your ankle to become very lax, sometimes atrophied and stiff. And you'll find rather than your foot sitting nice and flat that it wants to drop. It wants to have foot drop. Okay, is that something that you've noticed? Okay, I'm going to measure the length of your foot. And now one thing that we can sometimes do for helping to prevent with this is to have a foot plate that has an angle that towards the rear is actually lower than the front. I'm just going to put this in between your feet if that's okay real quick. Okay. Have you noticed that with one foot more than the other? It doesn't have to be symmetrical, but proactively, if you have foot guard where you are, your foot would normally be resting like this, and your toes will come up, and that will give the ankle flex a little bit of a steeper. Mm -hmm. That also will cause um, a little bit more pressure on the of your feet, less so on your ankles or on your heel, and that can prevent additional pressure sores, especially if you're spending lots of time in that position. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, another thing that we could also look into, as well as the chair fitting, is um, custom shoe soles, something that would be very much like your seat cushion. And we want to make sure that the preservation of your feet, whether or not you need things like compression socks or if uh, just a little extra foam padding, gel padding within the feet or within the soles of the shoes can definitely be a... Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do top of your shoulder down to your hip bone, if this is okay. Okay. Just sit in a comfortable position. You don't have to try to sit up straight. Actually, we want you to be in as comfortable as a position as possible. Okay. Okay. 
I do tend to lean a little bit to one side. And is that normal? Have you noticed that? Okay. Now, there's going to be one area that's a little bit more personal, and this is going to be the drop, the what we call the bucket. And this is going to be a factor for a couple of different things. One, depending on your size, and sometimes having a lower bucket. Uh, so if you have like a one or two inch drop bucket, especially in your tailbone region. So if you're a larger person, it's a little bit more comfortable to have a curvature that will evenly distribute the weight versus having something that's a very, very flat. Um, if you have a low bucket drop, it's going to put a lot more even flat pressure on the entire underside. And when you do something like that, for some people, especially with heavy atrophy, that might work out pretty well. Um, but for others, sometimes it's just not that comfortable. And the nice thing about this equipment is it's also very customizable. So at any point, if this is not the right setting for you, you can modify it. But this measurement does take a little bit more movement. I'm going to, with your permission, stick this under one thigh and then pull it through on the other side. And that way we can get a good measurement of the back side of your legs and your buttocks. Okay. Okay. Is that alright? I promise it'll be very gentle. Okay. So let's start by Wrapping it under your knee. Okay, I'm gonna slide it up to your thighs. And then it looks like we're an even 24. same tactic but through your lower back. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this around your belly so we can get kind of your circumference. Do you have any interest in something like a seat belt? Something that will keep you in position in case you hit a rock or something like that? Okay. I'm going to move back down to your legs and I'm going to take the back side of your knee all the way down to the very bottom of your heel, okay? For the observation, do you mind, to the best of your ability, holding out both of your arms like this so that I can see how you stabilize? Okay. I'm just going to grab one arm here and give a little bit of movement. Okay, so your adjustments is very good. Okay, so you have some pretty good core strength. to measure the length of your shoulder right where it happens and down to your elbow and then to your wrist, okay? Okay, so we have 
15, and Is it for the measurements part? And then some of the other parts are purely preference, but also to gauge your dexterity in your fingers and in your wrists so that we know or can make an educated recommendation about what types of grips you want, what types of power controls, power assist controls that you might be looking for. It's okay if I take one of your hands and I can kind of Get a little bit of exercise in. Okay, I'll start with your left side here. And I just want you to give me a good fist. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze my fingers and give me a good squeeze. Okay. Good job. Okay. Good job. Now, over the course of this, have you noticed any kind of loss? Um, strength and dexterity in your hands. Just soreness? Okay, well that's good. It's probably the muscles that are building up based on new activities. Okay. And has anyone recommended any type of physical activity to improve posture, upper body, shoulder, forearms, any of that? Okay. The main difference between manual chairs and power chairs is the use of arms. And as much as a power chair can be comfortable and very enabling, um, if you choose to go the route of a manual chair, one of the things that you want to be very careful of is your shoulders. There are some options for power assist on manual chairs. It's a motorized wheel that can be placed in the center on the bottom of the chair and that will help push momentum. Uh, it's a smart drive, things like that can be very complementary to your shoulders. If you put a lot of wear and tear on those shoulders, it's good to try to take care of them as best you can. Or if you want to be self-maintaining of your shoulders, also encouraged, um, just be aware that it is a joint and muscle areas that were not necessarily intended for the amount of use that they will sometimes get afterwards. Um, so trying to be very aware of those sort of things can be immensely helpful down the road. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do some exercises with your shoulders and just gauge whether or not you have a good range of motion as well as if there's any restrictions, anything that hurts, preliminary things to watch out for, okay? Okay, so to start out, go ahead and put your arms like this. I'm going to try to bring your arms closer to me and I want you to resist me, okay? Good job. Okay, I know the opposite. Keep them locked in here and push. I'm going to push against you, okay? Very good upper body. Okay. Take your arms out like this. I'm going to do a nice little wing. Okay. And I'm going to try to push down. Good, good. Resist me. Good job. Okay. Now we're going to do the opposite direction. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. And just stretch your shoulders. Show me. Okay. Now in this position here, I want you to push forward with your elbows and push them towards me. Okay, and I'm going to fight against you, okay? Good job. Now vice versa. Pull back, and I'm going to cup my hands around your elbows. Good, good, good. Very good. Well, again, not trying to be a physician or 
physical therapist or make any kind of recommendations as far as maintaining as somebody that is a chair user and I can tell you that the shoulders are going to probably be one of the things that um, will be the most vocal when they are in pain uh, so doing stretching lightweight exercise doing repetitions sometimes more so than weight uh, those can be very therapeutic ways of exercising and keeping mobile and keeping those joints and muscles as healthy as possible. But, okay. Things you will learn in time. Okay, so we have good upper body strength. And that I am not necessarily worried about. So the next question comes up in relation to wheels. With your level of complication, um, having good back support, having accessible wheels, wheels that might have different degrees of camber so that you don't break your knuckles when you're going around a curve or up against a wall. Um, is there anything in particular that you have thought about that you might like? Well, if you've never been through it before, that's understandable. Um, I think probably one of the biggest things that I could recommend would be to get a slight gamer on 24 inch wheels. If you were to go with a 24 inch rigid wheelchair, um, that way one of the things that you would learn very quickly, you might have seen in older style hospital chairs, is hurting your knuckles. Going around corners, going in and out of doors, when those wheels are not cambered, your hands make dark contact with that wall. Okay. Usually camber comes in a couple different varying degrees, one, two and a half, five, and then you have the more sport type of chairs like the basketball wheelchairs um, that have a pretty steep camber. Okay. And this is again an adjustable feature, so if it's not something that you're happy with, if your door doorways are not wide enough, you can adjust them. If you have plenty of leeway, you can also make them wider. It does improve the center of gravity, yeah. Um, so if you have any kind of problems with flipping over, things like that, we can also add tippers or anti-flip bars. Okay. Alright, so we'll start with a one degree. It's probably typical. And given your width, um, that still is pretty reasonable as far as accommodations. You know, if you go to an average hotel and they have a 24 inch doorway, that would still give you plenty to get in. Okay. and back posture. So I'm going to, with your permission, place my hands along the back side and I want you to lean away from your backrest. And so I'm just going to try to feel what muscles you have going on here, whether or not you're going to prefer a additional backrest, something that has an arch to it to help keep the correct alignment of your spine. Okay, so we'll just, we'll wing it. <laughs> Go ahead and I'm going to have you lean forward a little bit. I'm going to place my hands behind your back. And with this, go ahead and lean against my hands right here. And I'm just going to kind of work my way up your back here to feel the muscles. I'm just kind of fight against it, okay? So around T6, T7, does the sensation change here at all? Okay. Yeah, the hydroponics is kicking in again. It does it every 20 minutes. Alright. So I'd say probably around T6, T7 is where the loss of stability starts going, and then once we hit T5, 
T4. Okay, well, if we were to go with something that was pneumatic, um, you can also have just a slide in backrest, but with it being pneumatic, you can, of course, add more into the chambers, and that way it'll make it a more firm backrest. It'll also give it a little bit more of a curvature, or if you want something that's just very subtle, helps with your posture. And if your level of effect is happening at the T4, T5 range and below, yeah. And if that's something that improves in time, wonderful. It's a slide and insert, so it's not something that you have to commit to that's going to be part of the rigid chair. But that does go to the next question, which is the backside of the chair. Um, the most common is a cloth back, something that's more like a sling that you can lean into. It has a slight curvature that goes down, cups your back, it's comfortable. Um, and then there are some things that are a little bit more rigid that hold your torso into place. And this would be very useful if you start to lose more functionality, something that's going to hold your position, keep your posture and such. Again, interchangeable though, so it's not like a lifelong commitment. Okay. I'm going to go the most common route. Okay. And with the back insert, that will also greatly help just with posture in general. And you can remove it, so if you if you feel like you're just having an off day and you want to slouch a little bit more, you can. Okay. And we're going to start, start with maybe a small, I want to maybe go with an 8 inch tall. Okay. Insert. And now this will come with a pump and that can also be used with the seat cushions. And Given the height of backrest, we're going to go about 18 inches on the backrest. But if we go with a cushion that has a maximum height of about 4 inches, um, you can also adjust that. So anywhere between 3 and 4 is where most people are comfortable. But that will give you about 14 inches um, at the least range as far as your back posture goes. So it's kind of a learning experience. There may be some adjustments that you're not anticipating that you'll run into. Okay. Backrest. And did we decide? Do you have any opinion on the bucket trap? It is adjustable, just like many other aspects. Um, but I think, given the lack of atrophy that you're experiencing, I would probably say a one and a half to two inch uh, bucket trap would be. About as comfortable as you can get. Also, with the Rojo cushion, you're going to have these little air pocket chambers. So, if you want more um, of a rigid, flat surface, those center air pockets are independently controlled. So, you can kind of compensate in certain areas. But pneumatically, it's also a lot more comfortable. Okay. All right, and so the tilt of the chair, you're going to have some level of where the center of gravity is for your wheels, and then the tilt of the chair. Uh, so the backside of your butt will be right here, and your backrest is always going to be 90 degrees. So the steeper that angle goes down, the more you're going to feel like you are reclining. But also when we have that kind of an influx, if you move your center of gravity further back, you're also going to have more weight with that. You're also going to be extending your shoulders quite a bit further. And if you have good flexibility, if you're manageable weight, that might not even be an issue. So you want to remain fairly active. Okay. Well... I think that if activity is something that's very important to you, people generally uh, like to have a center of gravity a little bit farther back where the majority of their torso weight is going to be. And when you move those wheels back, you're going to be extending your shoulders a little farther back. 
Is that okay? It's adjustable. <laughs> like everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to move it to directly under where your torso straight down is. Okay. And based on where your hip bone is, I'm going to say that's about 18 inches back. And the length of your legs, I would recommend a seat depth between 18 and 19 inches. Okay. We'll go with, again, it's adjustable. It's just a cloth panel that bolts in, so you can remove the bolts. You can slide that cloth panel forward. It is attached to the back side of your backrest, so you just kind of take a little bit from one side to add to another. Okay. And with the width of your hips, I'm going to recommend a 16 inch diameter for your seat cushion. Does that sound? Okay. Adjustable. Okay. And caster wheels. Now you said that you wanted to remain fairly active when you are living your life. So caster wheels are the small wheels in the front. They attach to the frog legs and those are going to be a couple of different ways. You can get them rigid. You can also get them with shock absorbers. So if you're an all-terrain kind of person, you can have very wide caster wheels, large caster wheels, helps navigate around rocks, dirt, mud, pretty much anything. And um, if you're looking for a smoother ride, if you have spasm triggers and going over rocks trigger spasms, sometimes the shock absorbers can kind of mitigate that a little bit. And they look really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So another factor with the casters is the larger the wheel, the more that's going to create that tilt because they're going to be wider, they're going to be larger, and it's going to give you an inch or two of lift. So your front will go up. We want to make sure that we can keep you at a very balanced level by also keeping the proper size caster in the front. Again, adjustable, so if they prove to be too large, you can just shrink them down and get something, a couple of Allen wrenches, you can pop on new ones. Okay. I'd probably recommend a one to a one and a quarter inch on the caster wheel. Um, I'm partial to, uh, no, I can't think of the word, word right now, but they're pneumatic, but they're made of a polyurethane. So very, very hard material, but it's also lighter weight because it is nomadic, um, but it's very puncture resistant. You get them in one or one and a quarter inch in width. You can navigate over a lot of different terrain with those. And given the angle that we're aiming for, I'd probably say about a four, four and a half inch in diameter. Okay. Larger, larger is not necessarily bad. Um, what you might find with something that's larger, based on the width of your feet, is the pedestal that your feet rest on. Uh, if your feet tend to separate in time, turning those caster wheels will come around and they'll actually bump into that center plate or to the back of your foot. I mean, it's not terrible, but unless you're doing something that... Uh, really calls for a larger diameter. Sometimes it's just not necessary. The width of the wheel has more uh, important factor than the diameter of the wheel. Okay, so we'll go with a four inch on that. That's probably standardized as well. It's kind of like rollerblades. If you see rollerblades, they're probably 30 millimeter or th three inch wheels. So they're not particularly large. But boy, on good ball bearings, those can go extremely, extremely fast and smooth. Yeah, same concept. Alrighty. And we're going to go with the shock absorbers on the 
drug legs there. Alrighty. And the most important question of all. What color? You can stand out. You can go with something very colorful. A neon green. Sparkling opal. Candy green. Candy purple. Red, pink, yellow. Or black. Incognito. You can get them with the rims as well on the wheels. The wheels are interchangeable. I'm going to have a center pin and let those wheels go into and the chamber tube underneath. So if you find wheels that you prefer more, um, keep in mind if you go with a larger size you might have to adjust the position of your scissor brakes. Well, why don't I show you a different color scheme and you can make your final decision and email me from there. Um, but at the moment, what would probably be a good start is to get these numbers and measurements off to the manufacturers and see if we can get the parts started. Then once you decide on the color of the frame, get the frame painted. Alright, lovely. Well, I hope to make you a little bit more comfortable in the future and possibly once this all arrives, if there's any adjustments, maybe we'll see you back here with some modifications. Thank you for stopping in this afternoon, and I'll see you later.